Hey, this is the Great Johannes Podcast with uh, Johannes speaking. Uh, I wanted to talk about the influence of fathers on the psychological development of their sons. Now, I'm not a psychologist, but I have noticed some things and I'm allowed to talk about it. So I have some notes on my computer that I think I'll go through here. Um, I got the following impression from personal experience and seeing it in others as well, is that as you grow up as a teenage boy, around the start of your teenage years, 10 years old, 11, 12, 13 years old, you are going to become more like your father for the simple reason that now you are, you are expected to deal with the outside world on your own. You are no longer a baby. You're not a toddler. You're becoming a man, not yet a man, right? And you have to deal with things like, can you go to the bicycle repair shop and ask for your bike to be repaired? You have to do this on your own now. You're going to go there, ask them for the repair, pay for it, or make the appointment. And <clears throat> where do you, as a 14-year-old, going to the bike shop on your own, <clears throat> where do you get your confidence to do that? You get it by emulating your father. You do it the way your father would have done it, right? Because you've seen your father do it sometimes, right? So you try to be more like your father and behave a little bit that way. And so your father is simply a cushion uh, you can rely on, you can fall back on. You know when stuntmen in the movies, they fall down a building on these massive cushions? That's your father, really. You can fall back on your father as a sort of psychological cushion that keeps you upright and confident enough to do all these things in society now without the direct or immediate guidance of your parent hovering over your shoulders. Now you're doing it on your own. Because where else do you get your confidence? Of course, they say you should look within, look inside yourself. There you find the confidence, but not when you're 14. When you're a teenager, teenage kid, you don't have that kind of confidence yet. You have to either, maybe you're a natural. Okay, sure, there's naturals. Maybe you are a natural. But a lot of people, they mimic confidence by pretending to have it, by pretending to be someone confident. And for most boys, that's their father. For most girls, that's their mother, right? Uh, but I'm talking about boys now because I don't have the experience being a girl. <clears throat> and so, however, what happens if you don't have a father as a boy? Well, you can try to be more like your mother, but that's going to set you up for a really messed up life. Because if you're going to be more like your mother, I mean behaving more like her as well, people may mistake you for someone who thinks he's a woman, right? Or for someone who isn't quite manly. So it's important that you uh, prime yourself with an example that is a man. Um, I think this whole process that I just described, I would like to call it imprinting. It is really your father who imprints some, some part of himself onto his children. The children allow themselves to be stamped with father's example, so to speak, so that they carry that example with them. They've internalized the image of their fathers, the boys, uh, and they use that, they carry that with them into the outside world to deal with the world. I think this explains why some people just are naturally very confident because they have a father who is naturally very confident. Or if you're a girl, you have a mother who is naturally very confident. And you copy that, you carry that with you, you internalize it, absorb it, right? And however, what happens if you don't have a father and you can't really use your mother as an example, then maybe you have an uncle or a grandfather, right? Or you have a close family friend. It, 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 the person you, you, whose example you follow obviously has to be accessible to you, socially accessible. This is somebody you have to be able to observe sometimes, the way they sit, the way they eat, right? The way they bathe perhaps even, the way they sleep, right? The way they walk, the way they compose themselves, and most importantly, how they deal with other people <clears throat> outside of the house. How do they deal with uh, service personnel? How do they deal with the guy at the bicycle repair shop? And when you've seen your father deal with these situations, then that's your main example. And you're going to be like that when you're a teenager, whether you like your father or not. You're going to use that example as, an, as a power for yourself to also know how to deal with the world. But if you really don't have a father at all, 
no father, you can't use your mother as an example. Say you have no uncles and no grandfathers, no one, no male father figure close to you whose example you can study and then internalize, then I believe you are also going to be quite messed up. I'm going to talk about that a little bit more. Um, indeed, much of our modern society is simply people copying other people's behaviors uh, because a lot of people don't know how to be confident. So you simply look for examples, and a father is always a powerful example for a boy, so that one works really well. Uh, but you might also, in the total absence of a father figure, you turn to pop culture, to the media, perhaps even to mythology or historical figures, or uh, you know people you saw on TV, uh, or even your peers. Maybe you have uh, someone in your, in your school, you are trying to be more like them. It's all possible, but usually these are uh, second choices. Your first choice would be your parent, your father as a boy. And you have other options as well. You're going to collect more. You're going to internalize more of people's behaviors. I guess what I'm trying to say here is that not all behavior is passed down genetically. I certainly don't believe that behavior per se is passed down genetically because it is certainly strongly culturally uh, transmitted. Right. If you watch your father's behaviors and you adopt his behaviors, you become more like him. That is a cultural transmission. It's not genetic, although there may be a genetic inclination for this or that behavior. Right? The behavior itself, the trigger is social, is cultural. Right. So the media and the culture, the pop culture and the mythology and the history altogether also have a tremendous influence on people. For, especially for people who may not have uh, a parental figure, as an example, and they are forced to look out in the outside world, in the movies, right, in, in music, and to see who you want to be like. And I think a lot of people do that anyway. Even if you do have a strong fatherly example, you may still look at, I don't know, I know somebody, for example, who, who kind of became like Kurt Cobain, the singer of Nirvana, and someone else became more like something else. But, because, but of course, pop culture is very dangerous because the, the, the examples you find in pop culture, they are more scripted. They are scripted by design, but also importantly, they are incomplete examples. They don't live in your house. You can't study them. You can't see their mannerisms. You can't see how they really are. All you see is the polished 30th take of a scene in the movies, for example, right, where the script has been rewritten and refined several times over for the perfect optimal impact. You can never be like that. You can't be like James Bond or Indiana Jones because those are fictional characters whose lines have been rehearsed many times over, polished, right, shiny, right? You can't be that way. You can't be as perfect as those uh, movie heroes are. Uh, it is important for you to find a real example, which is your own father, your grandfather, your uncle, a family friend, a brother, older brother, or so, whoever, right? It could be anybody, but anybody you can study up close. Not the ones you only see two movies of them, or you see, I don't know, you see Harrison Ford in a couple of movies, 12 movies or so. That still does not show you who that man really is. And all these characters are very different anyway, all right? But a lot of people do that. A lot of people prime themselves or allow themselves to be stamped by these fictional characters or from books as well, of course. Right. Um, and here is why I think uh, a culture's, a people's and nation's mythology and religion are so important for in the absence of a genuine father figure, it would be dangerous to turn to pop culture, but it would be a bit of a safer option for you to look at your culture's mythology. In my case, coming from the northwest of the Netherlands, I can look at Odin, Wotan. And I don't mean the one from Marvel Comics. I mean the one from the actual Eddas and the Icelandic sagas and some extant Germanic material. <clears throat> and, or I could look at a historical figure like Arminius. Or another literary figure like Siegfried. Those would be my male examples if I'm looking back at history and mythology. And I think that is a safer option. Okay, you, I know you can't study these figures, right? You can't study them, but at the very, meaning up close, but at the very least, 
Siegfried, Odin, Thor, and so on, they are characters, if you read the original sources, right? They are at least characters that were produced by your culture, and so they resemble a sort of male archetype that you may follow. Now, Christianity has been part of European people for a long time, although you can say that Christianity came from the Middle East, sure. But the thing... <clears throat> The thing with religions like Christianity, when they're with the, with the people for so long, the people change their religion. European Christianity is not the same as ancient Judaic Christianity of the Middle East, right? It is European. In the same manner that American Christianity or American Protestantism is quite different from European Protestantism, right? It's not the same. Um, religion is changed by the people who believe in it, who carry it with them. Right? The interpretation is different, for example. The expression is different, right? But still, uh, as a European person or an American person, looking to Christ is still a better option than looking to, say, I don't know, Justin Bieber, right? Because Christ, through the ages, has become an expression of a European ideal of manliness. Even though, in this case, Christ was a kind and gentle person, it's still better to follow such a person than, uh, you know, look for, I don't know, look for some female ghostbuster or something. That would be weird, right? That would be really strange. Perhaps you can say that for women, the monotheistic religions can be a problem if the God is a male deity, such as in Christianity. But I think Christianity kind of resolves this by also having a mother of God the Holy Mary, who is the mother of Christ. In that Mary figure, I believe women can find an example for themselves, right? So, you, so otherwise you would have the problem that God becomes overly transgenderized if both men and women have to see Christ as their example. That becomes a bit of a problem. It's better for women to look to Mary than and for men to look to the Christ figure. Okay, you can say this isn't fair. You can, you can say whatever you want about this, but of course I believe women deserve female examples if not their mother, and if they cannot find other women in their own uh, circles to, to emulate, then a mythological woman such as Mary would be a good idea because it comes from your own culture, right? And I believe in Germanic mythology, we also have the, the female character of Freya and other female characters as well. And so those could also inform a woman on how to be a woman. In one example, for example, although Freya is known to be lustful, she sleeps around with the gods, there are things she won't do. She will not sleep with the giant named Thrym. Right? So there, even, even a promiscuous woman like Freya, because she is the goddess of sexuality and fertility after all, uh, there are things she won't do. Right? <clears throat> And I think the story I've been telling you uh, so far kind of informs you about what is going wrong with the African-American community. Because the African-American community, we know they have a problem with father figures. A lot of their fathers are in jail or absent or not there. They have a sort of a one-off culture where the woman gets a child and the man is nowhere to be found. And so you have uh, children who've never seen their father, right? And that's very problematic, especially since the African-Americans have also been cut off from their African mythology and African oral traditions, their oral culture. And that means they grow up also in a culture that is predominantly Anglo-Saxon and Christian, which is all European or at least not really African. Oh, but Christ was an African and he's from the Middle East or wherever. That, that, that is irrelevant because the Christ religion, Christianity, if you believe in the Middle Eastern origin, that's the Semitic origin. It has nothing to do with the sub-Saharan, Central West African Bantu people, right? So the African-American males growing up without a father, having no good male role models, they can't look back at their own mythology because they don't have any. They didn't record it, right? They can't look back at their history because they didn't record it, right? They're cut off from the oral traditions that may still be spoken about in actual Africa, but these traditions, have, oral traditions, have been lost in the USA or in, in North America. And so African Americans, what choice do they have but to look to the culture they grow up in? And so they see Indiana Jones and they see James Bond, but these are white men or at least so far until to date, these are white men. And so that perhaps is a reason why Hollywood uh, seems to be uh, 
uh, trying to please these black men's needs for role models by turning Hercules black, by turning Hannibal black. Hannibal was a West Asian Semitic man. He was not a Sub-Saharan, right? And so they turned Snow White into a Latina or they, and so on and so forth, right? Or Rapunzel. I think Will Smith's wife, Jada Smith, is going to play Rapunzel. She doesn't even have hair. Okay, it's really weird, but that's the explanation, I think, for this transracial transformation that we're seeing in Hollywood is because there are so many black kids who have to look at the culture for male role models, which completely messes them up because these are not African men. They don't, these men don't come from their culture. Even a black Hercules doesn't come from African culture. A black Hannibal doesn't come from their culture. A, a, a black anything really doesn't come from their culture because they didn't record anything. They didn't write history. They didn't read and write, right? Uh, they would have to look back at the oral traditions that may still be told in the rural areas of Western Africa, Central Western Africa, and find out about who their real mythological heroes were, because they're not James Bond and Spider-Man and the Hulk and so on. That's not it. All that comes from the Western white people. And so as an African-American growing up in a white culture, right, uh, you know, you get messed up, especially if you don't have a father figure. But let's also talk about what's going on with white men in the West. How come so many white men now want to think that they can be a woman or they actually think they are a woman? Where does that come from? Well, isn't it obvious? Also among white men, an increasing number of kids grow up without a proper father figure, right? They don't, they don't look at TV anymore. And so feminism, I presume it's feminism, stepped in and started giving men female role models. Well, that is a sure recipe for men turning into women. Because if you, if you don't have a strong father, if you don't have a strong father figure as a man, right? If it's complete, if you are cut off from the male examples, then you're going to end up trying to emulate some woman. But it will completely mess you up because you're going to behave more like a woman. Maybe you will end up thinking you can't be a woman because you so desperately wish you were a woman. You want to be like your mom. You know, I think Kurt Cobain actually had that problem. The singer of Nirvana I mentioned, um, he had that problem that he didn't, he was gender confused. Uh, in his book, in his diary, he wrote about the fact that he was a bit confused. But isn't it obvious? Maybe he had a very domineering mother and he tr tries to be like his mother, but also because he isn't a woman, he also tries to get away from that. And so he starts using drugs. You see where this leads? It leads to this, you know, big, big problem. What we need to do in the Western world in general is we need to rekindle the fires of our cultural heroes. We need to identify which male role models that we can find in our own mythology, the mythology that came from our own people. For example, in the Northern European uh, sense, it was, this would be Odin, Thor, Friar, Heimdall, whatever, those characters. But then distill from that the sort of character traits these men would have had. I know they're mythological, I know they're not real, but what sort of character traits did they have? Or if you read the Icelandic sagas, many of them are, are about historical figures, about men who actually lived, what were they like? Right? What were these ancient old Norse Vikings really like? And then to emulate those traits, that I think is extremely healthy, but this requires the men of the Western society to start teaching boys how to be better men, better men than our generations have been so far, right? We can make the boys better men by teaching them uh, about the wisdom about how to be a man found in our mythology, in our Christian religion and so on, right? And I think that's what we need to start doing.